Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Hobo and his Girlfriend Wrestling Show. My name is Hobo Tom. I'm looking a little bit more hobo-ish. I kind of woke up from a nap. Had some mayonnaise bread. Some fancy fruity water stuff. Some energy, because I need to wake up a little bit. I have a show to do. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I do, again, apologize. I've been kind of working a lot the past couple days. So I'm sorry this episode is getting up a little bit late. But let's talk about SmackDown. I couldn't believe how fun the show was. I mean, there were some down points, but those down points were nothing compared to what previous down points would be. And even, even I think I mentioned this on my Raw review, that Raw was really fun. It was a good watch. It was an easier watch. And SmackDown is always easy on the eyes. I mean, the two hours goes by so quickly. So much good stuff on SmackDown. But Raw was also really good, too, if you watched my previous review. And I hope to get this up. Well, I need to get this up tonight. Because, again, it's a day behind. And then probably on Friday, I'll do my Lucha Underground review. And then, whew, finally going to have a Saturday and Sunday off of wrestling. What am I going to do? Oh, wait, I have to change the calendar. I'll figure stuff out. I have to pay bills. I have to mark days off my calendar. But let's get to some wrestling. Let's get to SmackDown. SmackDown's really fun. And the great thing about this is that it has some continuity with last week's episode where we have a new show. We have Truth TV with our truth and Carmella. Their first guest is Daniel Bryan. And oh my gosh. They just seem to have so much fun during the whole segment. I mean, Daniel Bryan was all smiles. Our truth was it was a true face. And oh, it was just so fun. And of course the Miz comes out. Comes out again. When my hand goes up, your mouth goes shut. Um he just told Daniel Bryan, it's like, hey. I face you in Australia at the Super Showdown for a chance at the WWE title. People know who I am. I'm The Miz. I don't care what I have to do. I'll do it for a shot at the WWE Championship. Will you be able to do that too, Daniel Bryan? And this was kind of like Bray Wyatt and John Cena. Where Bray Wyatt tempted John Cena to use that chair. Stoop down to my level. Hit me with that chair. I wonder if the same thing will happen at the Super Showdown. And I don't know if I'm going to be doing a live review. I think it comes on at 6 in the morning my time. I might be fishing. I have to stock the freezer full of fish. So I'm running out of food. Again, I had my I guess somewhat yummy mayo bread. And meal water. But I need fish. I haven't been fishing in a long time. And it's going to be really my, my second weekend off in four months. So I should really try and enjoy myself. Yeah, this was really fun though. <laughs> One of the best lines. Mrs. Band from Truth TV for life. That was... So well delivered. Our truth is dancing. Daniel Bryan is just having a good time. Our truth did challenge Miz for the rights to his show. Uh, Miz went backstage, talked to Paige, and Paige just said, "No, he challenged you. Go shoot, go out there and fight for your show." And this led, led to the first match of the night, was amazing, which was Miz versus Our Truth. Miz is good at taking a beating and taking certain bumps. Um, for a while, um, he would be slapped around by, by Carmella, then smacked by R-Truth on the outside. Carmella's really doing good as a face. They've made they've really given her a good transition from heel to face. Uh, she has a whole hairstyle change. It's more natural. Looks different. It'll take a, take a while to get, get used to. She looks less pompous. 
I guess she looks more like that, that girl next door. So she does have that going for her. Um, her outfit's a little bit different. But, I mean, she's, she's really good. She, she gets involved in matches. Her wrestling's improved tremendously, especially if you watch, well, well someone of my review from the Mixed Match Challenge. I think that was the one match I missed, I think. And I had some technical difficulties. I figured out technical difficulties. So Tuesday night, I'll you'll be able to see more. Wait, yeah, yeah, you'll be able to see more, or hear more at least. I can't show too much. Looking at the kind of bottom of the screen, you can show little snippets of it. But I am figuring stuff out finally. So again. That I mean, our art. I never knew Archbeth was so good. He was busting out moves left and right. I think he's also like pushing forty. I want to say he's over forty. He's still doing great. I mean, it was just amazing. But then, of course, the Miz is going to have his comeback. The, the Miz took back his show because he hit a skull crushing finale. But that was not the finisher, folks. The finisher was when Miz pointed Daniel Bryan. Gave him the knee plus, the running knee. And then he pinned our truth Because, again, Daniel Bryan was a commentary. and did a really good job of commentary. The, probably the best thing he did is that... <laughs> not so much just for him or, or those in the ring, but he didn't say anything about, about Bree's boshiness. Bree has some major ring rust. And he didn't mention that last time. Because it like, kind of got overshadowed. There was a six-person tag. So it didn't show off. So her ring rust didn't show off as much. But ooh, Brie, Brie lost a step or two. Again, this is evident. Suicide dive is supposed to go ooh, ooh. And her suicide dive goes So. And really good. Uh, this Then this led to an amazing backstage where Charlotte was posing in one of her, I guess, her new shirts. And Becky Lynch out of nowhere just jumps her, beats her up, leaves her down, yells at the cameraman, we don't care about Charlotte, you want to take pictures of the champ. So again, you have the image of Becky Lynch again with her foot on top of a fallen Charlotte, raising the, raising the title. Heel Becky Lynch is so good! Good! Oh yeah! What the macho man I heard? Macho man might come back just to call Becky Lynch matches here. Yeah. You know what she's gonna do. She might shake your hand. She might slap you in the face. Yeah. I'm out of here. I got play got places to go, people to see, spaces to place. The cream always rises to the top. The past has been, the future has yet to be. You always stay in the present. Yeah. There we go. Then, that was fun. Then we have Big E versus Sheamus. Again, a really... Oh, the previous match, by the way. Miz and R-Truth. Surf and turf quality stuff, folks. And this led again to the, to the next match. Big E versus Sheamus. Jameis is so good at being a heel. He's just like, I don't care about your silly stuff. He's the he's a he, he plays a serious heel who just beats up people. That's what he should always be. Biggie's the fun-loving big guy, and the classic face, fun-loving big guy. Sheamus, classic heel. I'm just gonna beat you up, guy. And this is good because I like what they're doing in SmackDown, and the fact that they're pitting two similar styles. But they're really showcasing, again, each wrestler's strength. Whereas on SmackDown, and I, uh, well, I'm sorry, on Raw, where I mentioned this before, but they have really this, the, the power style. They really have the opposite styles facing each other a lot of times. And, again, it just seems like they're doing the same thing, big guy versus little guy, big guy versus little guy, big guy versus little guy. But here they're actually doing it where, for the most part, the opponents in theory should be very evenly matched. And again, you have two big, powerful guys. Big E's known for his power wrestling. Sheamus definitely known for his power wrestling. 
I mean, both can take a bump. I mean, it was amazing. Um, Big E did a hip toss out of the ring on Sheamus. Sheamus very smoothly fell. I, it still hurt. But he did a very smoothly, very smooth transition. Very safe, I guess, safe transition. But it was really fun. On, they're really showcasing both wrestlers. It was so good. Um, there was very little involvement from the outside, so it was a really good wrestling match. I, uh, Sheamus went over. Again, it was power versus power. It was really good. A really good quality wrestling match. Another surf and turf match. Again, they, they keep the matches a lot of time. The matches are really fun. Then we get to AJ has a backstage interview with Paige. And I think throughout the entire video, I know for the live crowd, they kind of see it. And you can hear him go, woo, woo, too sweet, too, woo, woo, too sweet, woo, woo, too sweet. So it was really fun. It was fun. At least it shows that the audience is getting involved and they're just not sitting there. Then Rusev calls out in English, still getting the chance of Rusev Day. Um, in English comes out and he, he's like, wait, wait, I helped you on Rusev Day. Starts to call out Lana. Ooh. Something about what happened in Milwaukee? Uh-oh. And then Lana lost Rusev the matches? Indeed. So again, who is Rusev? And, and this leads up to a great question. And questions are always good, especially if they're good quality questions. And this could lead to a feud that's going to last more for the net, more, more past the Super Showdown. I'm looking at my calendar just to remind me. But who will Rusev choose? Will he choose his best friend Aiden English or his wife, Lana? And Lana, you have to do a little bit better job with that Russian accent. Because unless you say Rusev, people are going to figure out you're from Tennessee. Because she's slipping up a little bit. So um, then we have a match. When the Iconics come out, the Iconics look different. They've I think the WWE, at least at the main roster stage, is kind of losing that car cartoonish quality because both Billy Kay and Peyton Royce came out and they just had like normal looking black hair. And my girlfriend doesn't hear, but they do look kind of cute together. And it's it's nice to see like I guess naturalness out of people instead of being fake. Again, there are some wrestlers I've I've met that. Unless you knew exactly who they were, you'd never be able to tell. When I met Nick's Nulish yelling glasses, she had a girl with a shiniest wizard shirt. I'm like, you look familiar. So like, who are you then? Again, if Nick's Nulish walks into to where I work, even if she wore a girl with a shiniest wizard shirt, I wouldn't know who she was. When I met MJ Jenkins, I think the only reason I realized who she was is because she had like a, a red a very subtle dye job it was a red red curly mohawk and she looked kind of broad just to not not big but just kind of wide shouldered but she looked kind of big to be working just the camera and, and you're gonna ask I don't mind and especially because it wasn't during the middle of the show at the intermission. And it's like, oh, you've seen me. It's like, have I seen you? Looking away. Yeah, I, she looks familiar. Very sloppy look back. Again, yeah, you have to take a look at manners and stuff. But again, Ken, if Candice LeRae and Johnny Gargano walked, walked into the store I worked at, I'd have no clue who they were. Masa Champa, maybe. You don't get many men with, 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 a, with a beard down to like the middle of their chest. And who's all veiny looking? Again, various 
Again, Lars Sullivan walks in a room. Everyone knows who Lars Sullivan is. Um, Roland Mendoza walks in a room. It's like, hi. Or even on like the main roster. And if Ty Dillinger showed up, he'd be like, hi. He'd be like, ten. If he did that, then I know who it was. But if he didn't give a ten, I'd be like, thank you. Please come again. So, but again, uh, this led to a match with Naomi and Asuka, and it show, shows them getting warmed up. And then they're just being that, that odd couple. Which I guess is good, especially if they do incorporate a woman's belt at the October pay per view evolution. I know November's typically Survivor Series. And again, Naomi Nasuka took on Boo, Sonya Deville, Andy Rose, who came out in white again. I don't know what it is. They just look better in white. Who knows? But again, they did like a clip from the Performance Center. Um, who was, it was uh, Rose and Deville were, were, mo were mocking Naomi and Asuka. And Asuka said something about Naomi's hair and started to play with it a little bit. And Naomi, I think, did something with Asuka's hair because Asuka always has like green and purple hair. Asuka's great. Naomi's good too. But Asuka's great. Asuka is Asuka. The funny thing is, there's such a language barrier between the two. Even in the Mixed Max Challenge, the, the language barrier between the Miz and Asuka, it's comedic, it's well-timed, it's great. Asuka could be saying the nicest things. Oh, Mar Maurice and I went out, and, and, and you're such a lucky man. And she could be saying the nicest things. And saying how nice Monroe Sky is and how well behaved the baby she is. The way she says it is just mean. And the Miz is like, okay, 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 okay. So again, Asuka's amazing character. They're bringing more, more out, more of Asuka's character, I guess, which is good. They do have to put a belt on Asuka soon, I hope. Um, this for the most part was a semi squash match. Yeah, Rose, Rose, and and Deville got in, got in some licks. Um, I got a couple new new outfit. That's right. It was a semi squash match. Eh, I mean, if it's a semi, it was it was entertaining. It was it was kind of short. It was a ham sandwich match. This led to the next match. Ty Dillinger, who's that? The Perfect Ten came back versus Shinsuke Nakamura, and and for the most part, I'm going to give it a cheeseburger. Even though we'll find out what happens shortly. I mean, Ty gets his hits in. He gets kind of he gets on a roll a little bit. Shinsuke Nakamura starts off really strong, takes his Ty. Ty, of course, on on his comeback. Right before Ty can do some of his signature moves, the Viper comes out. Randy Orton. And we got to sell the death to finish, baby. Ty Dillinger win. Only in WWE with a death to finish will someone actually win. So Randy Orton came in, began to play those head games with Nakamura. That would be a great match. Probably not for this or the Super Showdown pay-per-view because that's too soon. Orton has to do it a few more times. And then probably for not Survivor Series, but oh, what's the next one called? Either Extreme Rules or, or the TLC show. Tables, Ladders, and Chairs in December. And again, feel free to comment if I'm getting my, my shows mixed up. So I want to say, I think the one's going to be held in a ballpark in Arizona. Maybe that's the Royal Rumble? That might make sense. I don't know. I, I was watching baseball on TV. 
I was watching the highlights. They were advertising the Royal Rumble out in Arizona, I think. So, but we'll see. Fascinating to hear who are there. And then Orton, and then he, he was interviewed backstage. He's like, why'd you, die? why'd you jump Ty Dillinger? He's like, that's his name? Ty Dillinger? Or almost. Like, that perfect 10 crap? This is shoved off Dillinger like he was nothing. He wants Nakamura. He's playing those head games, those viperish head games with Nakamura. And it's good. Again, as long as, well, this was a cheese. It was a death, it was a death if finish. But it was a dusty old cheese bugger, baby. It was good, though. I mean, it explains things. I mean, they're using, I guess, proxies to help further the story between Shinsuke and Randy Orton. And that could be really good. Then really the last match of the night, Becky Lynch previously challenged Lana. Why Lana? But hey. To a match. And Lana got in a little offense. Becky just beat her up though. And the really cool thing about it, Becky started to throw in some new moves there. I always like it when wrestlers begin to open up their repertoire. They open up their bingo book of wrestling moves. So even though it was really a squash match, just to show how, how great Becky Lynch is, especially heel Becky Lynch. Becky, heel Becky Lynch is best Becky Lynch. And Becky Lynch even came out in a slightly different outfit, too. It was more shimmery, I guess. Zipper is getting a little lower. Mark of a true heel. And even though it was a semi squash match, it was still a really good, fun cheeseburger match. And really, this help explains the, the, the evil Becky character more, which is great. Leading up to evolution, this should be awesome. And again, it's enough time to let everything breathe and, and to let things build to, to a good crescendo. And then finally, we have the contract signing between AJ Styles and Samoa Joe. For the Super Showdown, uh, Paige was there. AJ Styles says, come on, Samoa Joe, don't be a coward. Paige is like, Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe. And then up on the team trying to eventually be <laughs> the WWE found someone whose last name was Ashley Styles. But they found a house or at least had a mailbox with a classic Home Depot white lettering of Styles. And had a had a gift for for AJ's or a doll, and it was just really creepy. Very Halloweenish. Actually, you know what? It's, it's very purge-like. Ooh. WWE speaking in a little purge, which is still on the USA Network. So, again, it led to some intrigue. Hey, at least AJ didn't pull out a gun. Like the Brian Pillman, Stone Cold Steve Austin incident many, many, many years ago that I can actually still remember. And I would like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Again, I'll try to be a little bit more diligent putting up my videos when they could be put up. Again, I was just kind of really busy and opening up at 8 in the morning, getting 6 hours of sleep. No fun. Because when I come home, I have to do this. Big ol' hobo. Collect my aluminum.